Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorial videos in quantum statistics. This video is on identical particles. We should probably call it rule number 6, and that's what I'm going to do. It is tutorial number 11, and the previous video was a multiplicity rule summary. To be honest, I probably should have done... Uh, I should probably should have swapped the order, but look, this is the way I'm recording it, and that's that. So, what I'm going to talk about now is identical particles. Let's say we went from A, B, C, and D to four A's. Okay? Well, if you've been following my previous videos, you know that the macro state, the only macro state, the multiplicity of it is equal to one. And I'm going to show you why the multiplicity is equal to one right now. Let's say we had there there are four particles, but let's say we just we move them around. So I put down all four particles here. We have A, 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 and A. Now let's say I swap their I swap their positions, and this guy goes around like that. And then I do the same again. Now look, if you look at each of those. If you look at each of those, they're the same state. So no matter what way you rearrange identical particles, you will still have the same state. So that means the multiplicity will always be equal to 1. Alright? So that means that there is only one macro state. So if you put, there's only one way of putting n1, uh, n1 particles into box 1, n2 particles into box 2, and 3 particles into box 3. So the only thing we need to really work, uh, worry about is the uh, is the is the microstates? That's the only thing we need to worry about. So that's what we'll do in Animo. Okay. So, so what happens now? So we what happens? So we've taken n, and we've put n one box one, n two in box two, n three in box three, and n sub s in box s. All right. And as I said, there's only one way of doing that. The multiplicity of that is one. Now, what happens if I want to put each of these into their identical particles? But I want to put that into G into G1 states, this into G2 states, this into G3 states, this is into G sub s states. So each of the n sub s particles is now being has to, has to be distributed among G sub s microstates. Okay, and each one of the each one of the macro boxes has to do this. So. Let's look at, I don't know, let's take for example G sub 3. So this is macro state, macro state 3, this is box 3. We have n sub 3 particles, let's say 100. And we have G sub 3 micro states, let's say, I don't know, let's say, I don't know, 1000. For argument's sake, it actually doesn't matter at all. So let's draw them out. So there's one, there's box two, micro box three, micro box 500, micro box 1000. So there are my 1000 micro boxes. And now I'm going to put in my 100 particles somewhere in there. So they're identical. I could put maybe two in there, one in there, zero in there. I could put, I don't know, a big chunk of them in here another chunk of them in here. Whatever way I want. Alright, so now I've put, in this case, two particles into micro box 1, uh, say 20 particles into micro box 500, three, one particle into micro box 3 and so on. Out of our 100 particles that went into macro box number 3. Now we're trying to work out what is the multiplicity of this, what is the number, how, how many ways can we rearrange this? And I think we need to take off the blinkers a small bit. So far, we've been, we'll say, we've been filling these microstates with particles, and we've been trying to work out the multiplicity by filling the microstates with particles. So I'm going to ask you for just to take off the blinkers, shift to the side, and look at the problem in a different way. Let's instead of looking at the actual microboxes, let's look at the partitions between the microboxes. Well, this is partition. Partition 1. This is partition 2. Partition 3. Oh, is that right? Sorry, there. Yeah, that's right. 1, 2, 3. 
yeah exactly that's right and this one here is partition g sub s minus 1 or th uh, this is 999 okay so if you look at the partitions instead what you see is that there are g sub s minus 1 partitions okay so I'm going to rewrite that I'm going to rewrite that now So there are some micro boxes. This is partition one, partition two, partition three, partition G sub s minus one. Now, remember that there are n sub s particles somewhere dotted around in here as well. Whatever. But because of looking at the partitions, they are all in a line. So like let's say it'll be one, two dots, a line, a dot, a line dot 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 a line. Looks like Morse code I suppose, doesn't it? But these are all the particles lined up in all the micro boxes. But if we just look at the, the partitions, they're all in a line and it turns in, we have now recast the problem as having two species of particle. And the two species of particle are n sub s particles and g sub s minus one partitions. And this is something we know how to solve. We know how to get the multiplicity of having two different species of identical particles. No problem whatsoever. We've done it loads of times. So let's go ahead and rewrite the whole problem. Let's rewrite the whole problem. We've recast it. We have species 1 is n sub s particles. We have species 2. We have g sub s minus 1 partitions. So the total number of particles is equal to n sub s plus g sub s minus 1. We know that the maximum multiplicity is equal to n factorial is equal to n sub s plus g sub s minus 1 factorial. And we know that because we have duplicates, we need to divide by the duplicates. So the number of duplicates is equal to Okay, so well, it's usually pi. pi um, we know you need to multiply the factorials together. In actual fact, that notation there doesn't work. So what we're going to have is n sub s factorial multiplied by g sub s minus one factorial. That is the number of duplicates, and the total multiplicity as a result is equal to n sub s plus g sub s minus one factorial divided by n sub s factorial multiplied by g sub s minus 1 factorial. That is the multiplicity of a single macro box. Now that's important now. This is of a single macro box. So if you put in s equal to 1, well then we get the multiplicity of macro box 1 because there is no ma or ma because there there is no additional multiplicity because of the macro box. We said there was only one macro state. But then when we look at the micro states, we put in all the, the subscripts, we get the total multiplicity of that state. So in order to get the multiplicity of every set of particle, well then what we let's say we'll make it total, we need to multiply all the, the different boxes together. So we'll get the following. And that I can guarantee you is a formula you will see very shortly. Okay, so I hope that was reasonably, reasonably straightforward. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel and if you're in a good mood, please click on an ad.